If you're looking into getting your first credit card, make sure that you don't fall into the five fatal traps. I know the feeling. You get your first credit card and you're like, I've got this magical piece of plastic that lets me buy things. But as we all know, with great power comes great responsibility. So let me share with you some of the lessons that I've learned from my own credit card mistakes. And trust me, I've made a few to help you avoid these pitfalls and start your credit card journey on the right foot. Not paying off your balance in full every month. Now, I know it's tempting to just pay the minimum and think, you know, I'll just pay it off later. But trust me, that's a slippery slope that can lead to interest charges and potential debt. I know this firsthand because this happened to me. I got my first credit card when I was 19 and I got it for all the wrong reasons. I wasn't earning enough money and I wanted to buy myself new clothes for nights out. I'd visit my friends at uni and we'd have these huge nights out where I'd withdraw cash from my credit card, which I'd get charged for, uh, that was to go out, but it was well before contactless. That's thankfully for me, actually. Imagine if I had contactless then. So I stupidly racked up debt by buying clothes and partying. When my mum saw my credit card bill come through the post, she asked me how much it was. And by that time, I'd totally maxed it out to three grand. And it was horrible because she was disappointed in me and I felt embarrassed. Now, my mum's brilliant, so we sat down and we came up with a plan to pay it off. My introduction to credit cards was a valuable life lesson. Now, I can tell you what I should have done. You should only use about 30% of your limit. So, let's use mine as an example. With my three grand credit card, I should have spent around 900 quid. Now, this would have shown that I'm a responsible lender. The ideal scenario is that you pay off your balance every month. Now, I understand that this isn't always possible because people get credit cards for different reasons. And this is the best way to use your credit card, though, because it increases your credit score. And so you don't end up in debt as well, just like I did. Make it a habit to pay off your credit card balance in full every month and you'll save yourself a lot of money in the long run. Applying for too many cards at once. I mean, there are just so many options out there and they all seem to have these amazing rewards and benefits. But here's the thing. Every time you apply for a credit card, you get what's called a hard inquiry on your credit report. That can lead to a lower credit score. So if you apply for multiple cards all at the same time, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot. The other problem is that lenders may see this as a sign of desperation. Consumer credit reports contain loads of information about you and your financial relationships with lenders. So when you apply for credit, lenders pull a copy of your credit report. Each time your credit report is pulled, that credit inquiry appears on your report for a certain period of time. Credit inquiries fall into two different categories, soft inquiries and hard inquiries. Soft inquiries don't represent a formal credit application and they don't affect your credit score. Examples include credit report checks by existing creditors, companies making firm offers of credit or insurance, or when you request your own report. Hard inquiries occur when you apply for credit, so things like auto loans, mortgages or credit cards. These inquiries can remain on your credit report for up to two years and may affect your credit score. However, the impact of the inquiry will not last more than 12 months and any impact is minimal. So the best thing to do is to check which credit cards you can get by doing a credit card eligibility comparison online. It'll let you know what credit cards are available to you so that you don't have to make multiple applications. It's wise to give it like a couple of months if you get declined as well. Look out for a card with no annual fee and I'll go into more details about that later on. Get in the wrong credit cards. I know it's a minefield out there and you can just get lost in rewards, percentages and sometimes really confusing language around the cards. There are so many options out there and it's essential that you choose the card that fits your financial goals. So ask yourself some of these questions. Are you looking to build your credit score, earn rewards, a one-off purchase, or have a card for emergencies? 
Now, the best advice I can give you is don't let the rewards turn your head. There are other things that you need to take into account and the rewards are then just a nice added bonus. Here are the basic things that you should look for. No annual fee, which means you don't have to pay for the privilege of having that card. Make sure that the APR isn't sky high. Even if you're looking to pay off your card every month, you need to know that if anything else happens, which means that you can't pay it for a while, that the interest on it isn't too high. Make sure that you also look for any hidden charges. Now, once you're happy with the figures, look at what reward you can get. You know what, it, it all varies. So some cards will give you cash back, supermarket credit cards offer extra points and others can get you discounts on festivals and are free to use abroad. So work out what's more important to you. Find a card that matches your actual spending habits and your financial goals. Missing a payment. Now, this one is a biggie. Not only can missing a payment damage your credit score, but it can also result in late fees. Depending on the type of credit card you have and the amount of interest the lender charges, you'll need to pay the amount you owe plus the interest. The lender may also charge late fees. So it's really important to check the documentation that you received when you applied to know all of the charges and the fees for your credit card. Secondly, missing a payment can impact your credit report. Generally, it lasts for 30 days for a missed payment to show on your credit report. If you manage to make the full payment quickly, your lender might not report it to the credit reference agency. But if you miss the payment for that period, it's likely that it'll show as like a late or a missed payment on your report. Thirdly, a late payment can lead to a more permanent mark on your credit report. If it leads to a default or CCJ, that's a county court judgment, it can stay on your credit report for six years. That's a long time. That means if you want credit in the future, you might have difficulty being accepted because lenders can see how you've managed money in the past. Your future interest rates might increase. And when lenders are deciding to offer you money, the interest rate is often lower if you've got a proven track record of responsibly managing the repayments. A late payment or several missed payments can suggest that you're riskier to lend to. The lenders might choose to counteract this charge by charging you a higher interest rate for your next credit product. Missing a payment could also mean losing a promotional offer that came with your credit card. So for example, if your credit card came with a promotional offer, like something like 0% interest for a period of time, missing a payment could mean losing out on that offer. So... If you miss a credit card payment and it shows on your credit report, you could see a drop in your credit score. Rebuilding your score afterwards means making all further payments on time and in full, but it can take a while to see your credit score rise again. If your score has been impacted by a missed payment or late credit card payment, it's a good idea to wait for your score to rise again before looking for other types of credit. If you apply for credit, a new credit card, a loan or car finance, for example, you might only be offered rates that reflect your score. So waiting for your score to rise could mean seeing better offers. What can you do to prevent this? Well, the easiest thing to do is make sure that the payment that you set up to pay your credit card is around three days after payday. This way, you'll always know that you've got funds in your account. It's really important to make your payments on time to keep a healthy, high credit score. Not understanding the rewards programme. All right, let's talk about mistake number five, not understanding the rewards of the programme. Now, one of the main reasons that we get credit cards is for the rewards, right? Whether it's cashback or travel benefits, we all love a good perk. I am murder for it. But if you don't understand your card's reward system, then you could be missing out on some amazing benefits. When I got my first rewards card, I didn't really take the time to really understand how it worked. I was just swiping away, thinking that I was racking up points left, right and centre. But then I realised that I wasn't earning as many points as I thought because I wasn't using the card strategically. Once I took the time to learn about the rewards programme and how to maximise my points, I was able to get way more for my money. Hopefully this video has helped you avoid the five credit card traps. Remember, it's all about being responsible, understanding your card's rewards program, and also sticking to a budget. 
If you can avoid these pitfalls, you'll be well on your way to a healthy financial future and a high credit score. Now you know how to beat the credit card game. You're going to want to click here for my next video where I share the secret to writing off credit card, loan and overdraft debt in the UK. So click here and I'll see you in the next video.